Change your thoughts, change your story, change your actions, change your life. But follow me for a second, guys. Our perspective, opinion, creates our perception, awareness, and our perception creates our beliefs. Our beliefs create our behavior. Our behavior creates our reality, and our reality creates our next perspective. And the cycle continues over and over and over again until there is a shift, until somebody or something steps in and moves. So an example of that would be if one has the mentality or the perspective that money is the root of all evil, that I can never get enough money, that money is always outside of my wheelhouse. If you have that perspective, it creates a perception which creates a certain belief. And that belief creates experiences. And those experiences create reality. And we walk around shunning money and judging people who have it and saying that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And we just keep reinforcing this experience and this reality over and over again. Meanwhile, money is innocent. Meanwhile, money hears you. Money is listening. Because remember, money is just energy. It's been said that we as a species think anywhere from 50,000 to 70,000 thoughts a day. And the question I have for you and the question I've had for myself is are those thoughts uplifting and empowering or are they destructive in nature? Because remember, we don't attract that which we want, we attract that which we are and that attraction comes from our innermost thoughts and actions. Are they in harmony is the question. You see, for me, success is not owned. Success, however you deem it, is not owned, it's rented, and the rent is due every day. You know, Ernest Holmes said that people are always praying and wishing for things, but it's not what you pray for, it's what you pray from. You know, I find it funny that a lot of us, a lot of people are so anxious to improve their circumstances. They want a better car, a better mate, a better house, they want a better everything, but they aren't willing to improve themselves. And see, in this process of your thoughts become things, we have to be willing to sacrifice. Now when people hear that word, they go, oh, Preston, that's a bad word. It's not a bad word. The question is, is are you willing to sacrifice your small thinking? Are you willing to sacrifice your self-sabotaging thoughts? Are you willing to sacrifice scrolling through and looking through magazines that make you feel less of a man or a woman? Are you willing to sacrifice going on to TMZ or any other website that promotes gossip and complaining? Are you willing to sacrifice those things? Are you willing to sacrifice going to those porn sites to attract the woman or the man of your dreams? Because if you're not willing to sacrifice that, you're not willing to have the life of your dreams. As Byron Katie reminds us, we don't let go of our thoughts. That, that would be resistance. We're not, everybody's trying to get rid of the thoughts. It's, can you meet them with compassion and understanding? Can you meet the thought? You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not skinny enough with compassion and understanding. Because if you can, you'll get that thoughts are a lot like this ocean. They come and they flow. They ebb and they flow. And no thought, they're not personal. They're just like the clouds or the raindrops. Nobody complains about the rain being personal. It just is. It just is. And when you can meet the thoughts with compassion and love, they'll let go of you. And the next time they come up, maybe the story and the thought won't hurt you. Maybe you'll find it amusing. I can tell you from my personal life that this happens all the time. The story of me being dyslexic and not being able to read or being as smart as everyone else comes up. And more often than not now, because I meet that with love and compassion, I find it funny. I go, huh, interesting, interesting. And then I choose something else. Guys, I found that negative thoughts, that thoughts that don't serve us are running our lives. We're holding on to things that don't serve us and they're not true with a capital T. They are not facts, they're just thoughts. And we walk around isolating and punishing ourselves and other people about these thoughts. Ah, I got the right religion. Ah, I got the right politics. Ah, we hold on to these thoughts, they're not true, they're not facts. The next time a crazy ass thought comes up, I want you to do three things. One, I want you to not identify with them. I want you to remember this ocean. Remember the raindrops, remember the clouds, and know that they are not here to stay. They are just coming and going. And number two, I want you to make friends with them. I want you to meet them with compassion and love and get that they're not yours. And number three, I want you to remember that you always have a choice. That once you notice the thought and you meet it with compassion, that you can choose something else. Blessings 
and blessings, my beautiful tribe, my beautiful family from Uluwatu, Bali. I love you guys so much. I am, we are, hashtag love's voice is going down in a beautiful major way. Live love, give love, be love. ways will not open new doors. New doors are opened by new thinking. New doors are opened by new action. New doors open up by pressing up against the things that we're most afraid of.